Hey guys, the objective of this video is to give an introduction to pure substances, uh, elaborate on the key differences between pure substances and idle gases, and to observe the PV diagram of uh, pure substances. Of a uh, special interest uh, pure substances will most likely be water, which we will be dealing with 95% of the time, and certain refrigerants such as R12, R134A, and NH3, which is commonly known as ammonia. Now, it is important to note that pure, substance, pure substances do not behave like ideal gases, and as such, all the previous equations we have derived using the ideal gas law are invalid. This is particularly important to note, as many students, when not being careful enough, will use the relations we found previously when they really shouldn't. When it comes to pure substances, there are no empirical formulae we can count on. Rather, we have to use experimentally collected data, and we have to access them through steam tables. We do know, however, the PV diagrams involved. So the PV diagram looks as follows. A key difference between uh, substances such as water and other ideal gases such as air is that when working on thermodynamic problems, water can exist in the liquid state and the gaseous or the vapor state. Now, we all know that when we heat water to its boiling point, it doesn't go completely or rather immediately from a liquid to a gas. Rather, what tends to happen is we have the liquid state and then a little bit of a hybrid between liquid and vapor state until we finally get the full vapor state. What this curve therefore in particular is telling us is that along this line, which we will call the saturated liquid line, is an instance when the, when the water is first changing into a gas. So when it is just going from this state to that state. So this is the saturated liquid line. And conversely, this is the saturated vapor line. As you probably would have guessed, this is when the substance or the water goes from here to this full state of vapor. This should uh, make relative sense as as the volume increases you expect uh, it to be a gas. Now this middle region that we have here is this hybrid region and this is what we call the two phase or the wet steam region. Essentially what exists here is this mixture, and the closer you are to the saturated liquid line, you will find that there is a higher percentage of liquid in the, in the mixture, and the closer you get to the saturated vapor line, you will find that higher the percentage of vapor in the mixture. Now how do we quantify these percentages? Well, we create a value x, which we call steam quality. This steam quality is defined as the mass of the vapor over the total mass. Now this, as we know, the total mass is just the mass of the vapor and the mass of the fluid. And so therefore we have this relation here where this steam quality is equal to the mass of the gas over the mass of the gas plus mass of the fluid. Where the subscripts, where the subscripts G and F denote the gaseous and fluid states respectively. Now if we go back to our PV diagram over here, if we go to the left of the saturated liquid line, we, will, uh, we go to a state where it's called the compressed liquid region. This region is basically 100% liquid, and therefore this state over here, outside the, to the right of the saturated vapor line, is what we call superheated vapor region. And this is obviously 100% vapor. 
Now, we have a reference for P and V, but what is the relation of this pure substance with the temperature? What we need to do for the temperature is we need to create what we call isotherms. These isotherms have a rough uh, shape like this. Let's say this one is equal to 150 degrees Celsius. Essentially what he's saying over here is that any substance that exists on the line, be it here, here or here, will have 150 degrees Celsius as its temperature. So if it's, a, if it's a superheated vapor, or if it's a wet steam, or if it's a saturated liquid, also if it's a compressed liquid, then if it exists on this line, then we have the given temperature, which is T equals 150 degrees Celsius. And generally, we'll have many, many isotherms. So we can have one over here. This one will be, say, maybe T is equal to 130 degrees Celsius. And obviously, as you go further up, you'll get higher temperatures. So this one can be like T is equal to 200 degrees Celsius. And there you have it, a simple PV diagram, which illustrates exactly what happens during the pure state substances. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.